Welcome to Night Hacking uh, at Java One Brazil. And uh, today I have uh, Michael Nascimento with me. And Michael, so how are you, first of all? I'm good. What this about is you? A yeah, this is the last day of the conference. So yeah, yeah, great content, great networking. Yep. So we are also all tired. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, you did a presentation at uh, the NetBeans Day. Yeah. About uh, jack jackpots. Right? Jackpot, yeah. Jackpot so. is a very interesting project that was created by James Gosling. Mm -hmm. And uh, later it was integrated into NetBeans. And what is fun, what's funny is that uh, it's not uh, very well known, even though it's technology that was originally created by James. And what it does is that it allows you to look at source code uh, in a different way. And because of that, it can help you, enable you, to do very interesting and powerful refactories, in, okay. as in a batch, you know? So that's what I talked about, and that's what I, I would like to, to show. Okay, well, please, yeah. show us. So, we love it. Yeah, so I'll give the background of my, my use case, and we'll see okay. how it's helpful. So uh, I, I had a large code base with many projects, and these projects used all different types of technology. And I wanted to migrate everything to use Java 8, Java SE 8, and Java E 7. Right? Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have like 20 projects which are all large, you would, you would have to be doing all the refactoring operations one by one, you know, and that besides taking a long time, besides being tedious, it's very much subject to, to error, right? If you try to migrate, for instance, all we use is, we, we used to use Java time to Java time, or if you want to uh, switch from Spring to CDI, there's so many details you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I was looking for a way that would help me to simply outline the process and make sure that it was done right every time. So then I thought of using Jackpot for that. So uh, what you can see here on my IDE is that I have some, some code that uses Jada Time, which I think is a good way for lots of people might be considering doing that, migrating mm -hmm. for, from Jada Time to Java Time. But if they have a large code base, how, they can, how could they, they do that, right? So the first step is, you have to have on your project a folder named MetaInf Upgrade, right? In this folder, you need to create in NetBeans an empty file. You can name it uh, whatever you like, but uh, the ending, the, the termination has to be hint, right? So I'm, I'm going to create a Java time to Java time hint file. And in, in my demo code here, uh, I have a few uses of local dates that we, we could use to illustrate how you can do this batch refactoring, which, okay. which is the main uh, benefit that you get from Project Jackpot, right? So first, for instance, in this line here, in line eight, we are simply creating a date to represent today's date, right? So local date is just year, month, day. Mm -hmm. And in the old API, uh, you, you would use a constructor to do that. In the new API, you have to use a static factory, right? So how to do this migration first, we are going to convert all usages from the old uh, Java time local date to Java time, right? So here in my hint, right? And you can use some descriptions to help you later when you see the code, this rule being applied so that you remember what this rule is about. So let's simply call it local date from Joda to Java time. So you're right? doing a live demo actually. Yeah, of course. Yeah, That's the fun part. It. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Let, let's see it crash or not. Hopefully not, right? So. What we want to migrate is our org Java time local date, and we want to convert it to Java time local date. So you simply use an arrow mm -hmm. here with the equal sign to Java time local date. Okay, and to finish the syntax that you use for jackpot inside that means you have to use two double sem columns, right? So that that tells that this is a complete rule. Now, as I go back to the editor. I can see that it's showing hints whenever local date mm -hmm. is used. And if I go here to the sidebar of the editor, I can see that it's, it has the description that I typed. And if I apply this hint by using uh, alt, alt Enter, it's going to rewrite it to use Java time, right? But doing this in a single editor window wouldn't really solve my problem. But the interesting yeah. part is I'm going to revert the change, is that if you have a project that has for instance, 500 classes, 2,000 classes, 20,000 classes. You can simply right-click the project, go to Inspect and Transform, 
And here in the single inspection, there's going to be a subsection called from project class path. And your hint is going to show here, right? And as you inspect, it even will show you the diff of applying this refactoring rule to all Java files that you have one by one. So if you had 5,000, you could maybe take a look at some to make sure it's doing the right thing and batch apply it to all of them, right? But now that I show how to do it in batch, let's just do a few transformations just to illustrate the, to the power of, of jackpot here. So I simply did first, uh, I changed the type, but we have to change the constructor, right? Mm -hmm. So now we are going to change from new local date to local date now, which is the, the right way to do it with Java time, right? So I'm trying to match. We, all, we always have to use the fully qualified names here uh, for, for the matching to work, right? So we are changing from new, the invocation of the constructor, to local date now. So if I didn't do anything wrong, which I hope I didn't, as we go back to my code here, and I, yeah, did it work? Oh yeah, of course, first, since I already renamed uh, the packaging, we have to use the new package here for all further instructions, right? So instead of using the constructor, we have to call the static factory. So now, in the two lines in which I have the constructor, I can see here on the hint that is also suggesting me to migrate from the constructor to the static factory. So I'll just apply here in the editor to make it fast. So I can apply the transformation here, and I could apply this to my, to my whole code base. Just as a final example for us to close, right? Uh, here I have a little bit of a more complex transformation. In Joda time, uh, this is the way, uh, this, this expression, this is the way that I would get today's date and move mm -hmm. to the last day of the month, right? Okay. Uh, but uh, with Java time, things are a little bit different, right? So I have a way to match those usages. So that's much more powerful than simply uh, a search and replace all, right? So I can migrate this expression, so I'll just uh, capture it here to, to make it faster, right? The funny part is uh, this, this method, because I changed, first I changed from org Java time to Java time, this method doesn't even exist anymore. But I can do this with jackpot. I can replace this variable with a meta variable. Let's call it one, mm -hmm. right? And I want this to be applied only when this variable is an instance of Java time local date, right? There's no space here. And when I find this, I want to change that to use instead with which is the proper way to do that with, um, with the new API. I want to change it for the new form, format, which is by using temporal, temporal uh, adjusters, which is uh, a class in the new API. The only, the only bad thing is that you have to use fully qualified names here. So sometimes it's easier to type here at first and to mm -hmm. transpose there. So let me just get it right here, and I'll, I'll copy there just to show uh, just to show how to do it, right? So you go to temporal adjusters, last day of month, okay? And from here, we can copy the transformation just to save some, some struggling with the typing, okay? Good. And we have to use fully qualified names, right? So I'm going to copy here the fully qualified name of the class, okay? That's it. And as I go back here to, to my source code, it's, it's immediate. We can see the hint here to do, to do the transformation again. This time, since I didn't put any description, it's simply going to, to show the name of the file. So it's showing Java time to Java time. This one I didn't put, put a label on, right? But the funny part is if I apply this transformation, it's a little bit more complex. It's not going to do this. Uh, simply by copying that code, we can see that the import was also added here. And Jackpot is smart enough just to add the import in case that there would be no collision. So if a fully qualified name was needed, it was going to use it. But since it knows that it's not needed, it adds the import and 
you have a complex transformation here. So we could do all sorts of uh, complex transformations here uh, using using jackpot, right? Mm -hmm. And now, and now that I saw, I actually did a, a transformation that was not uh, not exactly right. Besides that, we would need to get the actual date here at the end for the code to compile. But by doing this, you can first test it in a small code base, part of a code base, and then you can apply it to a huge number of projects. So that's one of the, the most difficult things when you want to migrate legacy. It's very hard to do by hand, but with Jackpot, you can simply automate the refactoring and applying many projects at once. Nice. So it's really cool. Wow. So and uh, so Jackpot, it's part of NetBeans. Yeah, yeah. So it's free, basically, right? It's free. I mean, it's, it's available, and I think that it's a it's a, a very cool feature of NetBeans because even for if for some reason you cannot use NetBeans for daily coding, here we are simply doing refactoring. So we could use this feature just to do this major refactoring and keep it using your IDE. But I'm pretty sure the people who like NetBeans will stick with it. Okay, so Jackpot, so use it, right? Sure. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Yelan. Thank you really so nice much. To you. Thank you. Thank you for showing us this hey, tool.